Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have for you today episode 4.14 of the video series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. This episode 4.14 is entitled Murderer. The biblical verse for today is the same as that for the last two episodes. It's John 8, verse 44, King James Version, public domain. And it goes like this. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So as mentioned in the last two episodes, Satan is variously described as the devil, as father of lies, and as murderer in this verse. So this is the same verse as priorly, but today we're concentrating on the aspect of Satan as murderer. Here's my comment of what is Satan the murderer? I feel he is the murderer of our understanding of what is true. When our bodies are not in a state of satanic wounding, we are far longer lived and in our true state, in our soul essence, we are eternal. The biblical story of the Garden of Eden is about knowledge of good and evil, introduced to Eve by Satan in the form of a serpent. A serpent is a type of reptile, and you re may recall in the last episode, we were speaking of Satan as a reptilian star being, or perhaps as some being that creates in humankind a hybrid or non-human mind and emotional set that might be termed the antisocial personality. In the story of the Garden of Eden, there is also a mention to a reptile that is like Satan, the serpent that tempts Eve. I have a picture for you of just that moment. The title is The Temptation and Fall of Eve, Illustration to Milton's Paradise Lost by William Blake, 1808, from Wikimedia Commons and its public domain. You should be aware this is the of Adam and Eve without any clothes whatsoever on. I'm warning you in advance. And the mean-looking, alluring serpent that's um, tempting Eve to, to eat this fruit. And Eve falls for it. So here's the picture. You can see the serpent twining around Eve, and she looks like she's been hypnotized, doesn't she? Like she's opening her mouth without even knowing that she's doing it and eating this fruit. And it looks like Adam has also been hypnotized and has turned the other way, uh, maybe through mind control or mental suggestion by this serpent, so that he can't help Eve to avoid this temptation in this unfortunate tableau. You know, knowledge of good and evil has to do with the world of duality, the third and fourth dimensions here on Earth, the physical realm and the astral realm. By concentrating on duality, we lose our vision of God within and without us. Thus it may be said that Satan murders our knowledge of our own God-like nature of the eternal soul within us. He is the murderer of that indwelling truth and the father of this, the greatest of lies, that we mortal human beings are all that is worth considering. While the powers of Satan are small with regard to those of the angelic forces, yet his wiles are much too wily 
for most humans to deal with. To overcome his lures, we must call upon God and the angels. Yet how may we do this if we never look beyond our personal physical forms? By ignoring our greatest allies in the realm of duality, we may lose a lifetime in listening all unawares to the false admonitions of the Satan world. Jesus, on the other hand, who always called upon his Heavenly Father for help, found respite from Satan, soul's ease in the ministrations of the angels, and so might we were we to call upon him for succor or aid or help. I have a good image for you. The title is Jesus Ministered to by Angels. The artist is James T.I. S.S.O.T. The date is 1886 to 1894. It's in Wikimedia Commons and is in the public domain. You can see Jesus lying on the ground, sleeping peacefully, and around him, all around him in the air, are angels with little lights of fire above their heads, uh, touching him with their hands and, and protecting him. It looks like this. It's a little hard to see the, the angels. See how peaceful Christ looks lying down as if he had no cares at all, as if they were there to protect him all the time. And those are their hands touching him all around there. And those are the lights above their heads. It's a beautiful painting, isn't it? And quite the opposite of the painting of the Garden of Eden, where the being there did not have the best interests of Adam and Eve in mind. Both might be said to be astral beings. Um, Satan and the angels. The angels are often of higher dimensions entirely than Satan. But the intent of Satan is to murder our higher consciousness and the intent of the angels is quite the opposite, to allow us to know God, to experience God in our own hearts and in our own lives and in the way that we live our lives, you see. So they're two very different sorts of beings. Well, that's all for now. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.